Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Canaan, New York, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host Raghunath and co-host and senior educator of the Bhakti Center New York, Kastiva Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Mara's Kiwi, Kia EV6. You were doing it live from the car today because our internet just didn't work at the 11th hour. So we've kind of got all the emergency messages from Costuba. What's going on? People started texting me. Is there a show today? No, the cri- what happened Look at to us. me? What happened to me, Rogan, is I was 10 minutes early. I was just entered into the meeting and then I started reading something else and I just got absorbed in it. And I was just, and then it was eight minutes past and I was like, hold it, it's 808, what's going on? (laughs) We did it without you. (laughs) You you see how beautifully we're dressed today? You can't tell. You look lovely, Raghunath. You got that flowery red bundy on. And Mara looks very, very elegant today. Well, this is Mara. Now we see the fruits of all of her shopping that she does in India, the, the mad <laughs> shopping sprees that she goes on, uncontrolled binge shopping, we could call it. <laughs> the funny thing is, Mara is the least. I have to beg her to shop. <laughs> Kitchen Free is like that too. I'm like, come on, let me get you some shoes or something. Oh, I don't need Yeah, I don't need shoes. I'll just wear barefoot. But anyway, we're going, we're doing a wedding this morning at the farm, an impromptu wedding. We figured it. For all the people who are planning long weddings, with this wedding was planned a day before. And Mary wow. just whipped out a beautiful cake. It's unbelievable how she put this cake together, a multi-layer cake. We had a bead feast last night, invited uh, Mangala Chitra and her da- oldest daughter and um, um, uh, Marari Prema, a.k.a. Sweet Banjo, Banjo Mike. Mike. Sweet yeah. Marari Prema. Is, is Sweet yeah. Marari Prema. And so his, his wonderful son, River, came. River? And, yeah. I mean, this, right. is, this is a great couple. So we're really wishing them well. And I hate that we abandoned them at the house, but we just said, Lee, we got to go. We just ran out. <laughs> we're going to marry the them right after the show. Wow. I mean, you should have married them on the show. Well, I hope you got a televised wedding. Yeah. Okay. So uh, how late are we, we going to just do like an hour? Are we going to like end this? Save no, we're going to do an hour. We're just going to let's just go through this. Go through this because there's auspicious times to marry. And then we got to get Hold back. It. So what are you saying? We're we got to get back for the we got to get back for the uh, auspicious times. Well, when is that? That's, that's not even, so, that's, so you want to end at the normal time? Is that what you're saying? Let's go five minutes over. OK, so, well, then okay. The, let's make your announcements. And let's get into this Q&A. Let's dive right in. Lots of great stuff coming up at the farm. We'll keep it short. Go to my link tree or go to raganath.yoga and you'll find out all the great things we have offering, including From Bondage to Bliss, which is me and Jiva G doing a uh, weekend retreat, the Bhakti Recovery and Self-Transformation. Also, we're going to do, during our teacher training, we're going to do a yoga farm stay where you can come and just stay for a few days, stay farm for a stay. week. Yeah, I like that, farm stay. Um so if you're interested in that, email supersoultrainings at gmail.com. Supersoultrainings at gmail.com. Great way to get the heck out of New York City in the beautiful summer upstate. Come on up. All right. 
Uh, we have a Urban Davy meeting tomorrow through the Bhakti Center at 11 a.m. with Gopi Gita Davy. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, go to bhaktisenter.org and look for the Urban Davy program. Do we have a show tomorrow? Why don't we do Q&A tomorrow? Do more Q&A tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, then. All right, let's dive into the cues, sir. Do you want me to kick it off? Why don't you cue me up? Cue you up. Okay. We got a question here, Raghunath. This is coming in. This is a long question. A bit long-winded, <clears throat> but a good question. Oh, this is, you're going to enjoy this question, Raghunath. You ready? Yeah. Long-winded sounds derogatory. Well, um, Melanie said herself that it was long-winded. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just following what she said. <laughs> yeah, you are long-winded, Melanie. <laughs> so um, she says, um, I have a question about deepening bhakti and what it looks like for me as a beginner on this path. Please forgive me for such a long-winded question, but I just want to give as much content as possible. Background. Uh, she started learning about uh, bhakti and Krishna consciousness from the Wisdom of the Sages podcast. Right. Immediately after Raghu appeared on the Joe Rogan show. And she has since, get this, Ernest, she has since listened to the entire Wisdom of the Sages library catalog three times. What? Yeah. All right, that's, you win. <laughs> you win, that's you it. Win. I've even missed some episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I have too. Um, while staying up to date with the current episodes. To say I'm hooked is an understatement. You've all changed my life. Thank you. I hope we've changed it for the better, Melanie. Yeah, I hope for the better. <laughs> for me, spirituality came very naturally. I've known since a young age that your words are powerful. Concepts about energy, vibration, and yoga asanas, etc., were all no-brainers for me. So mm. I find myself to be naturally open and receptive to the bhakti principles on how to behave in this world. Great. <clears throat> However, I have I have more tr I have more trouble with the more prescriptive side. People mm. telling me what to do with my yeah, me life. too. I, I I relate, Melanie. Okay. Stu was trying to tell me what to do. I'm like, no oh, way. Got him. Off my back. No, this this question has a lot to do with uh, the tension that you and I have. The, the, the healthy tension, I think, that you and I have. Melanie. Healthy talk. It's healthy, healthy tension. tension. Uh, she says so. So, however, I have more trouble with the I have more trouble with the more prescriptive side. I grew up going to Catholic church mm. and it left me feeling like I was repeating what they were doing just because like, yeah, just do it because I've don't seen. ask why don't try to understand yeah, yeah, the yeah. significance. Okay. I now know this because the small Bible has limited information for an infinite universe, which I was seeking so naturally. Mm. I got disinterested. Okay. Path yep. following the path. Yeah. In all, religion has always been more difficult for me to grasp and things seemed too prescriptive. I believe the main reason the bhakti path has struck and grown with me over three years is because of the plethora of Vedic wisdom related to science, Ayurveda, math, mantras, astrology. Yep. Is it plethora or plethora, Mara? I thought it was plethora, but... What did I say? I said plethora, we, we, right? We might have to educate you here. I think it's <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> I, I'm not attached. I, I may be wrong. You know, I'm free like that. After the show, you're like, how dare he? Okay. <laughs> but then, she says, but then but there then. are more mystical topics. Very, very many mystical topics. Of UFOs. Cities, yep. right? Mystic, magical perfections, yeah. Other planetary beings, yeah, etc. Bigfoot, which which Al called worldly wonders. Worldly wonders. Worldly wonders. I love them. The I love them. These topics speak to my endless curiosities for the magnificence of this world, and it made me very eager to learn more about bhakti. Now here comes the question. Ready? Having yeah, a very, already, I think she already answered it in that la last sentence, actually. But go on. You haven't, you haven't even heard it yet. Having a very quote unquote Rughu like curiosity. 
such a good thing. <laughs> I often need, this is all capitals there. I often need to hear more about the worldly wonders. Ooh. It may be hard to understand, but without exploring these things, I find myself losing the spark for the more prescribed side of bhakti. Sounds like the universe is telling Kastuba that we need another UFO episode. <laughs> I don't That's think we ever had one. Sounds like. <laughs> okay, feeling less eager, and at times it feels forced. Sure. I, I feel this is a symptom of being so incredibly dented and being very new to the path. So she's saying that this interest is a manifestation of dentedness, Raghunath. Sure. Are you accepting that? Uh, are we ready to go with this now? No, 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 no. We're just ready more. to go? My intention I is to... Unleashed! Raghunath my, unleashed! My intention is to stay and commit to the bhakti path, but I feel guilt when I explore these worldly wonders because it is often said that we, quote-unquote, shouldn't go there. I guess my question is, why is it advised not to explore these things? Indulging in the world of vimanas, for example. What are vimanas, Raghunath? Spaceships. Spaceships, <laughs> okay. They are spaceships. Indulging in the world of vimanas, for example, it genuinely and naturally fuels me to want to go live, live on Wisdom of the Sages, chant, hear, and read all about Krishna. It does not take me off the path. It draws me back in after a dry spell of bhakti. It reignites my interest in spark and spark for bhakti. The reality is most of these realistic spiritual, the, the reality is the most realistic spiritual path must have all the answers to these things. And I feel like exploring these just, and I feel like exploring these just makes me more firm in my belief in Krishna, seeing how deep and intricate this Vedic wisdom is. Essentially, I'd love to hear from you mm. if it is okay that I'm indulging in the mystical components of the Vedas. It's not okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> just kidding. Why, is it, why is it advised not to explore these things? I am too dented for bhakti if my mind needs to indulge in these other... Am I too dented am for I bhakti too dented? if my mind needs to indulge in these other aspects described in the Vedas? To quantify this and provide a ratio for every five hours of wisdom, the sages, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, listening and reading time, I would be listening to topics of worldly wonders for max one or two hours. So it's it's five That's to one point five ratio. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We're all gonna. I thought she was real. I thought she was gonna be real crazy. That sounds very. <laughs> I thought very it was grounded. gonna be the other way. Like okay, uh, yeah. five hours worldly five wonders. Five hours of bimanas, <laughs> mystical <laughs> powers, <laughs> plant. <laughs> Plant medicine, shape shifting, shape shifting, and then like <laughs> ten minutes of the Bhagavatam. Okay, uh, Raghunath, do you want to start? Yeah, you know, I find that uh, I, I'm the same way. I'm the same way, and I think it's. I think without that, I would, I would sort of. I I needed to. I like she said so eloquently. You needed to keep that interest sparked. I think the world is really interesting. I think the mystical side of the world is very interesting. And I think if it it's, if it's bringing you back to Krishna consciousness, that's perfect. Um, because we say the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing that doesn't mean like, for example, after I left the ashram, I really seriously studied martial arts. I really started re I always did yoga even before I was a devotee, but I really restarted getting into yoga, health, fasting, nutrition. You know what I mean? I really started getting into um, uh, just my 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 brain started getting uh, it, into a wide variety of things that wouldn't fit living as a brahmachari in the ashram per se, um, which is a very narrow path but a very deep path. It's almost like drilling for oil instead of like exploring. So as I left the Brahmachari ashram, I was more of an explorer, but all those things helped me become deeper into bhakti. I think they enhanced it. The, I, I think when you do start to wander from the main thing to explore, 
my only warning would be careful about things that are degrading. There are certain things that are a little degrading to the consciousness. And I'm not even talking about mystical things, although there's Vedic things that can be degrading as well. Um, they're all there. There's there are, you know, different paths that bring up degrading things. Um, but. You know, as far as like being in the material world, yeah, they got to be careful. There's certain things that I, I just won't go there, you know, um, as far as the mystical things of this world, I think they're sort of like interesting. They enhance my bhakti. And um, that's why they say, you know, yeah, just stay focused on the main thing. It's almost like a parent warning a kid. Yeah, just be careful. Be careful when you're out there. You know, my daughter's riding a motorcycle yesterday. So I'm thinking she got her license. So I'm like, you know, all right, just be careful. Don't do anything crazy. But ultimately, it's like you got to fly your own plane because Stuba's not going to fly your plane. I'm not going to fly your plane. You got to just be careful out in the material world. And I think sometimes falling into a ditch is a lesson that we need to to say, I don't want to, I got to be careful where I walk. What do you think about that, Kostuba? I think you're crazy, Raghunath. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But um, I, I I like this person, by the way. I, I do I'm too. into all I the really stuff like she's, person. I'm into I, all Melanie, the stuff she's into. No, M Melanie, um, when, when you say you, you, you hear concern like we shouldn't follow up on these things, or something, I don't know if that's something that you're picking up from the show or something that you're picking up from other people. Other picking sources. it up from you. Picking it up from you. <laughs> Is it my fault? <laughs> Your fault. No. But, what, but let me put this here. Raghunath and I often play uh, a bit with a certain tension, right? We, we, we have different personalities, and, uh, and based on those personalities, our interest in these Vedic texts, we, we approach it from not entirely different angles, but we each have our own, you know, our own particular type of interest in it. And Raghunath's a bit more um, interested in these things. I'm a bit less interested in these things, but I am interested in these things, and I do love to hear about them. Um, <laughs> yes, I do. It's all there in the Bhagavad Gita. So there, I have two things, I, two topics I wanted to bring up and, 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 and to that point, the, the, sometimes we we have fun with it, right? Sometimes yes. we have fun with it. And so I, I, I'm playing the role of correcting Raghunath, and he's playing the role of the um, why Broadening your mind. <laughs> right. I can help I'm, you. I can help and, you. And I'm trying to keep you focused on what's important, you know? So it's like, so, so here's the point. I, I have two points. And one is the point that Raghunath made, uh, which is keeping the main thing the main thing. And, and I'll get to that in a moment. The other point has to do with epistemology, you know, like, which means how do we know what we know? How do we know what's true? Right. Which becomes, is a fundamental aspect of Vedanta, right? Vedanta means if, if you're, when you're a bhakti yogi coming in these lineages, it means you're a Vedantin. It means that you've accepted the validity of the text of Srila Vyasadeva, the Vedas, right? Um, and that becomes what we call pramana. That is the means of knowledge. How do we perceive what is true and what is not true? When you go back and back, and, there are different ways. And, and you know, all, all the, different, the, the different branches of Vedanta, they accept three fundamental means of knowledge. One is called pratyaksha, which means, Raghu? Pratyaksha, what's in front of you? Yeah, direct perception. But you can per direct perception when you can perceive with your senses. Yes, direct perception. And um, aksha actually means like the eyes, right? Pratyaksha means like what's right there in your front of your eyes, what you can see, with your, you know, what you can perceive. And then another one is called anumana. Mana means? Mind. Mind. So anumana cool. means to, to follow the mind. It, it means inference, you know. Inference. Reasoning. Like, for example, uh, I'll give you I heard, a I heard a glass break. Okay. I think that glass, I think there's broken glass in the other room. I, uh, okay. Actually, yeah. would that be it? Well, I, I'll give examples in a moment. Don't worry. That, yeah, that, but that was fine. Yeah, that was okay. fine. Okay. And then Shabda, which means, shabda. yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, spiritual sound. Oh, well, I Spirit. mean, quite literally, Shabda just means sound. 
sound. But at least in, in this context, the, Brahman, the inference, is, the the um, the, this quality of learning is from hearing from authority. Hearing, from yeah, we could, we could call it testimony, right? Testimony. Mm -hmm. We're okay. hearing from someone yeah, else. I like that. Okay, so 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 let's let's just say like I wake up in the morning, I I pull up the shades, I I see that the sun has risen with my eyes. That's called pradyaksha, and I know the sun has risen. Now okay, that, that was time. direct perception. It was suitable to understand that the sun is risen. That was a suitable way to understand the sun has risen. Right? Mm. And then, based on that, I might say, you know, it's, it looks like it's a clear, sunny day. Mm. Um, there's going to be a lot of people in the park today. Right? That's anumana. Right? That was like... That's, that's inference. Uh, You're... Inference. Yeah. Um, but then, what if I question... Where does the sun come from? You know, like, what is the source of the sun? Pradyaksha is not going to answer that. Or how about this? Well, no, let me stick with this, Raghunath. I'm exactly. illustrating something, all right? I'm going to fix your analogy for you. <laughs> let me be free. Let me, let me. <laughs> so, so Pradyaksha won't answer that question. Where does the sun come from? What is the origin of the sun? Anumana also will not answer that. I could speculate about it forever. And, and so that kind of question, that, that realm of knowledge is called achintya, right? Achintya, which, which means it's inconceivable. It surpasses inference. Chintya, you know, it means like what you can grasp with your mind. Achintya, you, it's, it, it surpasses it. thought. It surpasses inference. It surpasses speculation. I could sit here and speculate my entire life of what is the origin of the sun and never know hmm. what is the origin of the sun. The only way that I'm going to know the origin of the sun is through shabda, is through testimony from someone that has a different perspective than my own. How about this? Check this out. Um, <laughs> now that bed, that's over, you can go ahead and that say that you are, Allows the analogies <laughs> over to me like that. How about the, like, um, you see the sunrise, it's morning time. It's sunny outside. Oh, it's going to be a nice day at the park. But for my window, for example, in my room, there could be um, very, very dark rain clouds. And from my vantage point, it looks sunny, but I can't see the rain clouds that are moving forward, where if someone who's outside could see that, that would be hearing from an authority. Someone who has testimony. Ah, you yeah. like that? Keep, keep yeah. that if you like it. I I think that might work better. I don't need it because I had mine from before. But I think you might, you might like mine a little better. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> and, uh, so, but but this is important because you know, like in the past week or so, we've been talking about uh, Richard Dawkins and the God delusion and all that. Basically, you're obsessed with this guy. I'm not obsessed, but this is. I'm not at all obsessed. Richard but... Dawkins. Richard Dawkins. Stop talking about Richard Dawkins. Every show. I'm going to talk about Richard Dawkins um, because it applies so well to this. Because you see, Richard Dawkins didn't grow up in the world of like Vedic thinkers where there they were these like brilliant minds that had deep faith in, in the Upanishads, deep faith in Bhagavad Gita, you know, philosophers, scientists, etc. We grew up in a world of speculators and guesswork. And, 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 and he was unfamiliar with like, like this basic model of a of epistemology these three right pradyaksha anumana shabda the people that grow up with that it gives you a world view right off the bat right right now yeah so so when someone coming from the background looks at richard dawkins and what he's doing what he's writing in his books they say he's he's limited pramana to pradyaksha He's saying that the only way to understand the world is through what you can perceive, whether you can perceive through your microscope, what you can, he'll even use Anumana to like, to defend his Pradyaksha. Sure. But it's, he has no idea about Shabda. It's the ABCs of like, don't trust your senses. Your senses are imperfect. How, you can't have perfect knowledge with imperfect senses. These are the ABCs you learn when you start studying the Vedas. And if, oh, oh. if, I feel, if people just learn this, yeah, it would save so much hours of studying silly philosophy. OK. And, and, you know, the point is even certainly the senses are fallible and that's one problem. But mm. but even beyond that, just to understand that they're limited. 
So even They're when limited. the senses are functioning well, to understand the origin of the sun does not fit within that realm of knowing. You'll never know that's, it. That's a good point. That's right. a good point. Okay. Because some, sometimes our senses aren't even, fun sometimes I can't see. What good is my sight if I can't even see? We see, we're, so we're gonna, your, your analogy spoke to the faultiness of the senses. Mine Please. is speaking to the limitation of the senses. Oh, okay. Yeah, you see, you see? All right, very good, very good. Okay. So, so right off the bat, these great thinkers, these incredible philosophers so, who wrote incredible, dense philosophy, who constructed beautiful, you know, power, you know unbelievable um, architecture, who created mathematical calculations, who developed, you know, the Sanskrit language, all of these, these weren't ignorant little children believing in fairies. These are great thinkers. They who also, they, believe, who also believed in fairies, who also, who also believed in UFOs, who believed in spaceships, <laughs> who believed in, they believed in Fast all these watch. things. They believe in okay. all these things and they invented algebra. Come on. <laughs> right. So, so bring so, this back to Melanie's question. That's though, exactly sir. where I'm going. That's okay. exactly where I'm going. So here's my first concern. There's no problem with interest in UFOs. There's no yeah. problem with interest in um, outer space beings. There's no problem in, in, in all of these, uh, in mystic cities, you know, no. in, in, in these. But the thing is, let's be careful about where we hear from them, because it's easy for this interest to go into, I, well, I just read this book from something here. I read that book from over there, or I saw this thing on Netflix over there. The, the, the Vedantin is, they get a little careful now, right? Am, am what I'm hearing from these sources, do I have faith in them as Pramana? Right. Or do, or, or do I measure them according to Vedanta, which is my Pramana? That's, that's, that's something that becomes real important. All right. right? Like so that. if Raghunath says, oh, I saw this thing on Netflix, I say, yeah, okay, but, you know, so like, and, and that, again, that's something that we have fun with and we play with. So, so that's the first thing is that the Vedantin is being careful that what they accept as truth is either from or consistent with val the valid testimony of the Vedic literature. And we need to be careful not to, not th the interest that you, that you take, um, Melanie, I'm not saying that you're doing this, but I'm saying that the potential is there. Someone that has strong interest in those things, they, they often have the potential to reach out into these other realms and accept them in the same, with the same validity as the Vedic literature. A Vedantin would say, be careful about that. Not, not mm -hmm. to, don't ever pick up that book, but just be careful. Okay, that's the first part. Well, and the second, yeah. If they study Vedic things, like <laughs> study Sanskrit, study Indi Bhart Nutyam or, um, uh, Mohini Uttam or some type of dance or study Vedic music or those, even those things can divert you from the main thing. Well, that's my second Sometimes point. we see academics who get, yes. they get caught up in academia and they become offensive. So it's even these great Vedic things can divert you. We see it all the time. So continue, Kostuba. Well, th well, that was my second point, Raghunath. Okay. Keep the main thing, the main thing. And exactly what you just said. I'm thinking um, like Mystic you. cities. They're fascinating. Our, our books write all about them. Yeah, but try it. Try it's it. Just, Have fun. It's just a manipulation of the material energy on a more sophisticated level. So, you know, like when Mother Yashoda looks in Krishna's mouth, she sees the entire universe. She doesn't get all caught up in that. She she just all she's she's interested, where's Krishna? I love Krishna. You know, when the gopis see Lord Vishnu with his four arms. They're like, they're not like, oh my God, there's the four armed Lord Vishnu. Right. What a mystical vision. No, they're like, uh, can you show us where Krishna is? So like ultimately, to, to the extent that these things help us think, <laughs> think and remember and, and, and develop an eagerness in us to, to um, know and love Krishna, great. What are, what are but, the but, examples? But we, that... but we have to be a little careful that, they, that we, we get all caught up in these things and we're actually not, Krishna conscious. Okay. That's right. What, what are the examples Prabhupada uses in the nectar of devotion to minimize the cities? He said, like, you want to enter yeah. into stone? We built a subway. You can enter right into the yeah, earth. They, they, they what got what, what else did he say? Yeah. What else did he say? Oh, um, well, what are the cities again? So uh, there's no, people in the air. Well, they have airplanes. We can fly in the but, air. Yeah. Why you want to you want to levitate? 
Yeah, I think he said something like that. You want, yeah. you want to levitate? Why not just get an airplane? It's the same thing. Yeah. And whenever when I read that, though, I was like, well, I actually would just like to levitate. It would be a lot cooler if I didn't need the plane. <laughs> It'd be cool. <laughs> I know. I was like, you want to enter into stone? Just go on the subway. I was like, no, I'd actually yeah. like to enter into that stone. It would be yeah. really but cool. So, so that that's a great example that you're using, Raghunath. That, that's kind of an example of Srila Prabhupada saying, you know what, when you're Krishna conscious, these things don't mean so much to you. You know, it's like they don't fascinate you. You know, so, know. So, they, so, they fascinate. I think they fasc they fascinate. <laughs> well, me. well, I think <laughs> they do. <laughs> then, I mean, what, then what was well, they, they're just not the goal. What was he illustrating that it's 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 not necessary to get the goal like you can yeah. cannot, you, you can already mechanically do these things. I mean, think about the things from the time Prabhupada wrote that he would have used Amazon Prime. You want something? We'll get a drone to deliver it to your house in 24 hours. How about that? That's Who needs crazy. Prophecy City? When that happens, it's going to get crazy. It's getting crazy, man. It's I know. getting real crazy <laughs> I know. when I can A.I. you and I can replace you. You, oh, you could just like you don't need Kastuba anymore. It's just gonna. No, like, I don't. Form. I've already got enough. But that of one you might on film. take over more than I do, Raghunath. That one might try to. That one might control you more than I do. So be <laughs> oh, careful. because I'm programming the AI. Kastuba. No, but it takes over. You always back down. <laughs> it takes over, <laughs> The AI Mara. The technology like a takes super over. knitter. You're gonna be. You're gonna be like. Stop you, knitting. You're gonna Stop be. Knitting. Con <laughs> you're gonna be controlled by this AI Kastuba. You're gonna be like. I miss the old Kastuba. <laughs> He's exactly taking over. <laughs> so, but but here's our here's our measuring stick, right? God, for the AI, the AI Kastuba can be really out of control. That guy, talk about anal. This guy is like <laughs> so, so, chopping so, me down. He has every like <laughs> argument in the book, quoting everything perfectly. You asked for AI Kastuba, now you got it. Crazy. So, so um. So here's our measuring stick. Whatever helps us remember with love, beautiful, sweet baby Krishna, we accept wholeheartedly. And whatever yeah. distracts us from that, even if it's coming from the Vedic literature, we're not so interested in it. And the same thing may remind one person and distract another person. So, but keep, just always keep that measuring stick. Just be a little aware of that as you're diving into your gandharvas and mystic cities and all these things uh, nothing wrong with that if it's study higher beings <laughs> they're interesting <laughs> all right <laughs> that's all right we Sid, think you're doing great though and, and your, ratio is, your ratio is pretty good there i've yeah. got some homework for you melanie sit aloka find out who lives on sit aloka and what do they do what do they do for fun there okay you. question number two okay, are you ready yeah, read it to me, please. My eyes are in okay, This comes from Liz via email. Hey, Liz. Thank you so much for the service you do. It's truly outstanding. I have a question. Hit me. On the one hand, we read... Oh, this is an esoteric question. Ooh. On the one hand, we read that our true ultimate goal is to worship Krishna in Vrindavan. This is... This is this in our particular bhakti lineage, right? And other bhakti lineages that may not, they may not have established that as the goal, as yep. the final goal. But in our lineage, the lineage of Sri Chaitanya and other lineages that are centered in Vrindavan, yes, we say that the high, love of God is the goal of life, but, uh, but within that, on the Venn, what do they call it? Venn diagram, whatever. Venn diagram, yeah. On the Venn diagram, there's a, a circle that says bhakti krishna even speaking like, of vin speaking of vin do you, you hear that vin diesel me? is a sadhu see, in a in a new movie that right there ragana you see that it's a, it. it's a full squirrel i'm okay that's what i'm that's what i do but did you hear <laughs> vin diesel's in this movie they made in varnasi Mar Mar just she just she just gave a little head shake when you said that ragana i saw it he said, that's what I do. And she was like, oh, okay. Man. Yeah, that's uh, what I do, Mara. <laughs> Love it or leave it. <laughs> Stop trying to change me. <laughs> okay. okay, back to Vin Diesel. And so in a Venn diagram, you have bhakti, even like, say, Vishnu, Vaishnavism, you could say. <clears throat> do you think I look like Vin Diesel? A lot of people have said that. No, you don't. You're bald. You got that going for you. 
a lot of people have said that. Who? You on Monday and you on Tuesday? Who? who, who Okay, we lost him. He's laughing at such a high pitch the microphone's not even picking it up right now. I might die and choke. <laughs> I grabbed oh, with the hernia. Oh, I didn't mean like I'm ripped. I just meant people say it. my facial features look like Vin Diesel. People confuse me sometimes. Yes, yeah, so it happens all the time, actually. <laughs> all right, cool. That, that, that's, that, that was the basis of Mara's interest in you, actually. Like, wow, he looks like Vin Diesel. He grew up in my building in New York, by the way, keeping the squirrel going. All right, go okay. on. Um, Venn diagram. Venn diagram. You have all Vedanta, right? And, and then within that, you know, like there's a there's like a Advaita Vedanta, and then there's like a, a devotional Vedanta. And within that, you know, like you have... What, why are you... <laughs> It was funny. Your joke was funny. Okay. So uh, w- within that broader realm of Vishnu slash Krishna Bhakti, there's there's a circle within it, which we could call Gaudiya Vaishnavism, right? Where right. Our stated goal is not only like say Vishnu Bhakti, the the awe and reverence of Lord Vishnu. Mm. We our our faith and our belief and our practice is focused around the intimate love, the intimate bhakti where you forget that Krishna is even God because you love him like a friend so deeply. You love him l- l- with the love that a parent has for a child so deeply. You love him like a, like a romantic lover has. That intimacy, that's a special type of bhakti, which is our stated goal. And that's what Liz is referring to here, mm. right? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so she says, on one hand, we read that our true ultimate goal is to worship Krishna in Vrindavan. And the book, The Nectar Devotion, which is Srila Prabhupada's kind of su- loose translation of, um, of uh, the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu of Rupa Goswami, which is a book that really defines all of this, right? So, yeah. she, so she mentions, and The Nectar de- Devotion describes the different pastimes there as the ultimate goal, entering into Krishna's leelas in, in Vrindavan. There are heavy passages that everything else is a waste of time. So, yes, sometimes we do hear from, say, like a poet, like, say, who, you know who I'm thinking of, Ramana? Yeah. Um, oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, with a P. A little closer to the mic, please. Oh, with a P. Prabodan on the Saraswati. Yeah. He, he's a person that he's so Adamant. emotionally invested deeply yeah. with a bit of. Um, a little fiery in a way you know yeah so when his heart it, it is exp- the expressions of his heart that are fueled with this intimate love for krishna and intimate love for vrindavan which is the realm of that type of love what he kind of um puts down everything else right? puts down everything else forget my mantras forget the world forget sacrifices forget everything yeah. i will never leave vrindavan dam Anyone that asks me to leave Vrindavan Dhamma is my enemy. You know, he's like yes. that. It's just, it's just full on enthusiasm. I it's, it's pull beautiful. Up some good on the Saraswati. Quotes. Okay, so all that being said, um, Liz continues. <clears throat> on the other hand, one moment. <laughs> Still... <clears throat> on the other hand, we often come across people in a temple who would describe themselves as a devotee of Lord Nishringadeva, like even people in our lineage, right? Or a devotee of Lord Ram. Or they have a name, like they get initiated and they get a name, not like Madhurya Prema, which is a very, or Madhu Prema, right? That's like a very Vrindavan Bhakti name, right? But like, but, but it's, she writes like a name like Aditi Devi Dasi or Ganesh Das. Right, those names, it sounds like, well, if our goal is to focus our consciousness on Vrindavan Bhakti, why give a disciple a name like Ganesh Das, right? Raghun? Yeah, yes? I'm doing some research here, doing some little research for you. Uh, on um, UFOs? Oh, <laughs> <on the> Saraswati, <laughs> thank you. Okay. All right. So now here's the question. How can they or we use this link back to Krishna in Vrindavan? Right? Like if my name is Ganesh Das, how do I even interpret that in relation to Krishna and Vrindavan, which is the goal? My friend 
was just recently given the name, or I, my friend was given the name, given a name of Lord Vamana the other day. Now, Vamana is, is the dwarf manifestation of Lord Vishnu. So what does that have to do with Krishna and Vrindavan? Right? So my friend was given a name of Lord Vamana the other day, and I'm just wondering how she'll link it to Lord Krishna of Vrindavan. And I don't want to ask her in case it casts doubt for her. Okay. Raghunath, what's the deal? To say, like, I'm a citizen of the world, or to say I'm an American, those are all true statements, you know. But um, to say I live in upstate New York on this particular address, that's another thing. I don't think it's it's such a big deal. I think we should just, like, back off. We're all from the same, you know, we're all back from off. the same country. Back off. Yeah, <laughs> big deal. Now, there are, more, there are more brudge names, and generally we sort of lean into that. Um, but it's not a big deal to say I'm an American. That doesn't that doesn't uh, take me away from saying I am in New York. I am a, a, New York a is the Vrindavan. I'm I'm a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker. Yeah, if New York so is Vrindavan and or a DTG. Yeah, it's the it's, it's the greater idea of where we're coming from. We're from the Vedic path. We worship great saints and sages and devis and devas. And um, I don't think it's a big deal. Sometimes you might want a Brindavan name, but sometimes I feel like, uh, yes. So I'm your saying. answer is back off. Back off. <laughs> Liz, back off. Back off, Liz. It's okay. It's uh, okay. Here's my answer. Is, um, well, just think about it. Uh, here's, a, here's another warning, okay, Raghunath? Here's a warning. Okay. That's sometimes I believe I've seen devotees in our lineage minimize certain aspects of our tradition, our literature, our culture, our practice, as Sarswati. as if they were promoted under Saraswati. Right. Um without really understanding what they're doing. And sometimes even like, like say a devotee has made it part of the, a Krishna devotee has made a part of their practice to every day do a puja to Lord Nishringadev, the, the man, lion, Vishnu incarnation. Right. And then they'll say, well, they really don't get it. Right? They really don't get it. But you know what? Who's the highest standard of Krishna bhakti? The, the, the pinnacle. Krishna bhakti? Yeah. Prabhupada. The pinnacle. The pinnacle. The gopis. Radharani. Okay, so we'll say Radharani is the very pinnacle. Yes. And Sri Chaitanya is also that pinnacle because he comes and he tastes Radha's love. Okay. Sure. So Sri Chaitanya becomes, in many ways, our model for understanding what is Krishna Bhakti. No one, no one can accuse Sri Chaitanya of misunderstanding the practice of of developing Krishna Prema or relishing Krishna Prema. He is the pinnacle. He goes into the Nishringadev temple. Just read Chaitanya Chartamrita, right? There he worships, go. he sees Lord Nishringadev, he, 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 he feels the deepest ecstasies, right? Yep. He, he, he hears the prayers of Prahlad Maharaj, he feels the deepest ecstasies and says, read that again, read that. He doesn't just say, I'm only reading the 10th canto of Bhagavatam. He hears Prahlad's pastimes and he says, read it again, read it again, read it. He's addicted to it, right? So obviously there's a direct connection to that in Krishna and Vrindavan for him. You understand? Like you, 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 let, let's say, um, let's, let's say that is Krishna, that Lord Nishringa. It is Krishna. You know, let's say, let's say um, Krishna has his son Rocco plays soccer, right? So let's say, like, some people see Rocco playing soccer like other parents. And they say, what a nice boy, and he's such a good soccer player, and they appreciate that, right? Or maybe there's some young girls there watching the game. Oh, he's dreamy, and, you know, and, and they're feeling like, you know, and, and that, that aspect, they only know a certain aspect of him 
Raghunath knows the more intimate aspect of him. So Raghunath loves him as his boy who he's held in his hands the day he was born, who's, who's walked hand in hand with and, and felt a, a deep, intimate kind of love that the people at the soccer game don't know anything about. But still, you love him as the soccer player as well. Right? There you go. All right? So, so, so Lord Chaitanya loves Krishna and Vrindavan, and he loves when he manifests as Lord Nishringadev, and he loves when he manifests as Lord Vamanadev. He loves all of that because it's all Krishna. It's not like Raghunath says, oh, I don't even want to see him play soccer. I'm only interested in him at home. No, it's, it's all different manifestations. It's the most intimate and deep personal, but there's these other aspects. And as a lover of Krishna, you have to love Lord Nishringadev and be fascinated by Lord Nishringadev and want to hear more about it. it it's the same Krishna, right? And, hear, and, and we see everything in relation. So like Ganesh Dasa, how do we understand? How does, for one person that doesn't know about Vrindavan Bhakti, they hear Ganesh and they may not have a particular interest, but for us, we say Ganesha, look at Brahma Samhita, right? Sri Chaitanya was completely absorbed and he, he, he read the Brahma Samhita, just one chapter from the book, he, and he became so captivated by it. He had it copied many times. He distributed it to all his closest associates. And in there, it tells us that Lord, Lord Ganesha, right, that he, he carries the lotus feet of Sri Krishna on his head, right? Okay, so I understand Ganesha in relation to Krishna. I understand Aditi in relation to Krishna. Why is, why is it spoken about in Bhagavatam? It, it's, all, you know, it, it's all in connection to glorious Sri Krishna. So, you know, take the six Goswamis. What are their names? Jiva, Sanatana, you know, even Raghunatha, you know, Ram, means it, a devotee Ram. of Lord Ram. Yeah, so, so um, let us not be more um holy than what is it holier than the poor pious than the pope or holier than the pope or whatever like that. More, pious more, than more, pope. more catholic than the pope let us not be more rustic than sri chaitanya <laughs> you know that's my point um point. Uh, yeah. yeah i like how, how you bring it back to krishna as long as they're just bringing the your consciousness to krishna as the supreme and i also think that they're also my thing was like my easy answer to that would be you could say i love women but i love one specific woman you know there are general statements and then there's more refined statements i think my answer was quite how simple. does your love for women to the point. manifest <laughs> <laughs> all right i think we're out of time is... at this point <laughs> okay i think we are too oh, okay oh. Do i'm gonna I have perform to get a wedding what do you think about okay. that Oh, congratulations to you, Ron. You'll be the center of this wedding. I want, you, I want everyone to know that. I'm going to do a wedding <laughs> for these two nice Zoomers. That's good. I'll marry everybody on Zoom. <laughs> to each other, not to me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, that really sounds weird. All right. Anyway, everybody, thanks for joining the show. Sorry I was late today. I was a little late. If you're listening as an other out there, my internet didn't work. And if you can't see us on YouTube, me and Mara are dressed very fancy today. You might even call us Fancy Pants, if you like. You fancy that. boy. A dandy. <laughs> You're a dandy. A dandy. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. You like what we're doing? Do you like what we're doing? We want to thank everybody who supports us. That's how this thing goes. You support us. People support us. They like what we're doing. So they go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages, and they give some monthly tithing. How do you say it? Or tithing. 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 Plethora. Tithing. tithing. Tithings of comfort and joy. Is that what they say in that song? No, no that's tithing. Is of comfort. You can give us a tithing. Yeah, yeah not tithing. Joy. Just give us some tithing, please. Um, you know what I love, Raghunath? You know, you know what, what I, I love? Do? I love the fact that a lot of people have doubled it. Whatever they're tithing, they're no, like, no, you no. know what? I'm getting double the pleasure than I was when I first started this. I'm going to double my tithing. What I love is what I love I is going sure. to the beach and watching the tithe come in. The tithing? Double that tithe. <laughs> double that tithe. <laughs> Some people give me $1. You triple. You could triple that. You could triple that. You could triple that. Five bucks. I'm worth one cup of 
Five bucks. That's what a cup of coffee costs nowadays. Does that's, it? That's one. I'm every. I'm only worth five <laughs> bucks a month to you. Five bucks a month. Come okay, on. Right now, you're about to get muted. <laughs> <laughs> Triple it. Oh, Krishna. It's gonna be a beautiful day today. We're gonna go back and pick peonies. Can do what? Peonies. Peonies. Pick peonies. It's peonies time here in upstate New York. Everything is out of control. What's it like there in the concrete jungle? It's beautiful. Is it really? Yeah. Is it? It is. Yeah. You may not have the eyes to on the see street. the beauty, but I, I don't. You know, I don't see it. Krishna's everywhere. You're fascinated by man-made creations. <laughs> Come see what Lord Brahma has prepared for you. <laughs> Various fruits and herbs growing from the earth. Come on my botany journey. 